What's going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 12th tutorial and this, my friends, is the tutorial that I have been waiting for. We are finally going to begin talking about math and math operators and all that good stuff. So a couple tutorials ago I gave you guys a quick little taste of variables and math operators and you saw that not only can you set variables equal to numbers and text, but you can also set them equal to simple equations. For example, 4 plus 6 uses the addition operator to set apples equal to 80. So what it does whenever you do this, it knows that you're working with numbers and it knows to add them together to give you the answer. So then when you have document right and you try to print out apples, it doesn't print out the text 4 plus 76. It actually prints out the value of 80. So in that sense, it knows that you're working with an equation. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that you can do is you can't, you not only limited to two numbers, you can go ahead and add three or four, however many you want. So let's go ahead and the answer to that is 778666. Pretty cool, huh? So let's go ahead and delete all this. And aside from the addition sign, you can also use the subtraction sign. I don't really need to show you an example of that because hopefully you guys know how to subtract. What I do want to show you guys an example of is multiplication. So the multiplication might be a little different than you guys would expect. It's actually, go ahead and type like 54 or something. It's not X. Don't ever use a lowercase s. It's actually the asterisk sign, just like that. So 54 times 3, let's go ahead and see what that equals. 162, pretty cool. So anyways, whenever you want to multiply, go ahead and use the asterisk sign. Whenever you want to divide, you can go ahead and you use the forward slash just like that. So 54 divided by 3 is 18. It goes in evenly. Pretty cool. But what if you have a number like 56 divided by 3 that doesn't go in evenly? Well, let's go ahead and refresh this and see we got 18.6666 and finally it cuts you off. This 6 actually goes on forever, but depending on your browser, it's going to cut you off after a little bit. Just like my friend did last night when I had too much brewskis. But anyways, it's going to cut you off. So that leads me to another point. What if you actually need that remainder as a number itself? For example, you were making a program and you said 18 remainder 2. Which would the answer to this problem be? Well, anytime you want the remainder, you need to add the percentage sign. And this is called the modulus operator. It basically divides one value by another and it gives you the remainder back. So 56 divided by 3 is 18 remainder 2. So when you save this, it's not going to say 18 remainder 2, it's just going to say 2. Simple enough. Let's give another example. 25 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 4, but it's not going to say 3 remainder 4, it's just going to say 4. Pretty cool, huh? So that is how you use the modulus operator. And the last thing I actually want to go over, it's not really a math operator at all, but it kind of is. It's called the increment and decrement operator. And this is how you can quickly add one or subtract one from a single number. So let's go ahead and make a variable called chops, short for pork chops, and set it equal to seven. By the way, I'm hungry. And let's go ahead, in order to add this you can add one to this variable in one of two ways. You can do chops, well I won't even teach you guys that, but you can do this. Chops equals chops plus one. So then it's going to say, all right, this variable now equals seven plus one. So we can go ahead and write document dot write chops. You can actually do this another way, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save this. And did I this is chop actually it was going plural and singular mixing it up can't do that so let's go ahead and save this print it out and we see that we do ha indeed have eight first it was seven then we added one to it we got eight pretty cool huh but see whenever you have chop equal chop plus one it can get kind of confusing so let me show you guys an easier way to quickly add one to a variable anytime you want to add one to a variable just go ahead and write the name of the variable then write plus plus and that's it. That'll take the number, whatever it is, say it's like 67, and it would add one to it, and that'll give you a completely new variable. So let's go ahead and save this, and now chops is equal to 68 instead of 67. So that is a way to change a variable by adding one to it. You can also write chop 
minus minus, this is the decrement, or what's called decrement, whatever, not decrement, that's a... Uh, that's something else, so I don't want to talk about that. And see, it was 67 before, and then we took that variable, subtracted one from it, so now chop equals 66, and we printed it out on the screen. So again, plus plus and minus minus, they aren't really useful right now in these examples, but trust me, whenever we learn about loops, and we're gonna learn about other stuff, and they're gonna come in handy, and we're gonna be using them a ton. So that's why I want to cover them now, so when we go over them later on, you won't get confused. So thank you guys for watching. That's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. A simple tutorial about math and simple equations. Oh, I got like a piece of phlegm in my throat. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my other videos.